In this lesson, we're going to take a quick look at two typical systems used to measure distance. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to correctly use a standard or metric ruler to measure objects or drawings in the classroom. There are two main systems of measurement used in the U.S., including the U.S. Customary System, also called the Standard System, and the International or SI System, also referred to as the Metric System. To find out more about these different measuring systems and to learn why the U.S. is the only industrialized nation in the world that still doesn't exclusively use the metric system, check out the extra credit podcast assignment, Why Isn't the U.S. on the Metric System? This is posted in Google Classroom, but I also put a link in the description. Although precision and accuracy are often confused, there is a difference between the meanings of these two terms in the fields of science and engineering. Precision indicates how close together repeated measurements of the same quantity are to each other. So a precise bathroom scale would give the same weight each time you stepped on the scale within a short time, even if it did not report your true weight. Accuracy indicates how close measurements are to the actual quantity being measured. For example, if you were to put a five pound weight on a scale, we would consider the scale accurate if it reported a weight of five pounds. It helps to understand these two terms if we think of precision and accuracy like hitting a target. Consider the arrows or dots on the targets to be measurements taken several times. The first target shows that the arrows or repeated measurements are centered around the center of the target. So. On the whole, the measurements are fairly close to the actual measurement, making the measuring device accurate. But the repeated measurements are not close to each other, so the precision of the measuring device is low. The second target shows that the arrows or repeated measurements are close together, so the precision is high, but the center of the measurements is not close to the bullseye or the actual value being measured. The third target shows both precision, because the measurements are close together, and accuracy, because the center of the measurements is close to the target value. A perfect measuring tool would be both accurate and precise, but most tools have limitations on how accurate or precise they can be. Accuracy is dependent on calibration to a standard. If a scale doesn't show zero pounds when there's no weight on it, then it's not calibrated and will not display an accurate measurement when weighing something. Precision is dependent on the characteristics or capabilities of the measuring device and its use. Precision was a problem in ancient times when the first measuring systems were invented. It was common to measure things using units that were based on the human body. An inch was considered to be the width of a man's thumb, so depending on which man was doing the measuring, the length of an object would be reported very differently each time it was measured. To avoid miscommunication, you should only report measurements to the precision that your tool is capable of. When recording a measurement, the digits that are given tell the reader about the precision, or rather the uncertainty, of the measurement. Significant digits are digits in a decimal number that tell the reader the uncertainty of the quantity. Suppose a bolt is measured to be 3.5 inches long. Recording 3.5 tells the reader that we're only certain of the accuracy of our measurement to the nearest tenth of an inch, and our tool didn't allow for a tighter measurement. However, if the bolt was measured to be 3.500 inches in length, those extra zeros tell the reader that we measured to the nearest one thousandth of an inch and that we're certain of the value of those decimal places. The additional decimal places are significant because they indicate a higher degree of precision. It would be a mistake to record these decimal places in a measurement if their value was not actually known. Fractions can cause some confusion when it comes to significant digits. For example, measuring 13 and 1 half inches equals a decimal measurement of 3.5, or precision only to the tenths place, when this measurement is actually accurate to the nearest sixteenth. As the fractions break down further, they can indicate greater precision. 13 and 1 quarter indicates two decimal places. 13 and 1 eighth indicates three. 
and 13 and 1 16th equates to 13.0625. When recorded as a decimal, it looks as though we're certain of this measurement to the nearest 10,000th of an inch, when we're actually only certain to the nearest 16th. For this reason, fractional measurements are best reported as fractions. When measurements are taken digitally, they should be reported exactly as they're read, including zeros after the decimal point. When using decimal scaled instruments, record all digits that you can determine from the marks on the scale, and do not try to estimate greater precision than the instrument is designed to report. Let's take a look at the U.S. customary system. In this presentation, we'll concentrate on linear measurements of length. Two systems are used for measuring length in the U.S., but the U.S. customary system is the most common. This is seen on most rulers and tape measures as inches divided into smaller fractions of an inch. These divisions usually get as small as 1 16th inch increments. Some steel rulers include smaller divisions such as 30 seconds or 60 fourths, but these can be difficult to read and are not practical for most applications. The divisions on a U.S. customary ruler are easily identified by different lengths of lines. The largest markings on the scale identify whole inches. Each subsequently shorter tick mark indicates half the distance between the next longer tick marks. For example, the next smaller tick mark indicates half of an inch. Half of a half equals one-fourth of an inch. One-fourth and three-fourths are shown. All fractions must be reduced to lowest terms, so while two-fourths does exist, it simplifies to one-half, and the longer one-half inch mark is what is seen on the ruler. Half of one-quarter inch equals one-eighth of an inch, and half of one-eighth of an inch equals one-sixteenth. After dividing the inch in half, then dividing those in half again and again and again, soon the ruler is broken down into 16 equal parts called sixteenths. Like the other measurements, the odd-numbered sixteenths get their own mark on the ruler, and the even-numbered sixteenths are simplified and recorded as other fractions. Let's use the U.S. customary system to measure the length of the rectangle. It can help to locate the largest, easiest to find lines on the ruler, then work your way toward the actual measurement. The largest lines are the whole inches, in this case, one inch. The next shortest line is the half inch line, and halfway between the half inch and whole inch is three fourths. Halfway between one half and three fourths is five eighths, and halfway between five eighths and three fourths is eleven sixteenths. So the length of the bar is 11 sixteenths of an inch. If this method is difficult, you can also count every mark past the whole inch as 1 16th until you reach your measurement, then simplify your fraction if you find an even number on top. For example, 10 sixteenths would simplify to 5 eighths. Now let's take a look at the metric system. The international or metric system does things a little bit differently. Instead of dividing base units in half over and over to create smaller and smaller fractions, all units can be multiplied and divided by 10 to convert into smaller or larger units. The base unit for measuring distance in the metric system is the meter, and when the meter is divided into 100 equal parts, the parts are called centimeters. The prefix centi indicates one one-hundredth of the base unit. When a centimeter is divided into 10 equal parts, these are called millimeters. The prefix milli indicates 1 1,000th of the base unit. The same prefix is applied to other types of measurements, like measuring the volume of a liquid in liters, which can be divided into 1,000 milliliters. Other prefixes indicate multiplication of the base unit. For example, the prefix kilo in the unit kilometer means 1,000 meters just as kilograms equals 1,000 grams. This ease of use in mathematics is part of the reason that the majority of the world exclusively uses the metric system for measurement. 
A typical metric ruler often includes 30 centimeters. Each centimeter is graduated into 10 millimeters. The millimeter is the smallest increment found on a typical metric ruler. The next longer line on a metric ruler shows 5 millimeters, and the longest lines represent full centimeters. These are the only marks that are actually numbered. Let's use the metric system to measure the length of the rectangle. Let's locate the largest, easiest to find lines on the ruler, then work our way toward the actual measurement. The largest lines are the whole centimeters, in this case 2 centimeters. From this mark we can count each smaller line as 1 millimeter until we arrive at the end of the rectangle. So we have 2 centimeters and 3 millimeters. As we've seen, each millimeter is one-tenth of a centimeter, so we report our measurement in centimeters with a decimal point and a 3 in the tenths place. So the length of our rectangle is 2.3 centimeters. It would also be appropriate to write this measurement as 23 millimeters. Dry out your measuring skills by measuring some objects in the classroom in both standard and metric units. Good luck!